Hey guys, so before we get into the video, I just wanted to add a very, very quick disclaimer. And that is that on a video like this, it's very likely that I'm going to get a lot of comments like, Hey man, stop complaining, just apply minoxidil. And I just wanted to let you guys know that it's very, very likely that I will be applying minoxidil uh, sometime in the future, but I won't be doing that until the end of my year around October 20th, or rather that's around the time I'll be assessing whether I need to. As of right now, I'm going to be going to the end of my year without applying minoxidil. And the intention of that, of course, is to build up a portfolio of content for those that possibly have patchier beards or your uh, for men that are growing out their beards a bit longer, maybe to an uncomfortable area and give things like, uh, you know, care tips, styling tips for people that are in those situations, having a larger variety of content for a larger different variety of hair types and uh, beard types and coverage types is very, very important for me. I want to be able to appeal to a large demographic. So I'm going <laughs> to kind of milk this phase and hopefully add more value to you guys. And hopefully you guys will understand uh, this video. I kind of created in more of a comedic vein, but it can be a little bit aggressive at times and uh, you know I, I, I might step on the throttle just a little bit too much but understand the intention of it is truly truly helpful and as you can see um, this finding that I found within the video is a helpful tip it's something that has ascended my beard game from what what it's been for the past two months or now it is a very helpful tip and hopefully this tip helps you out Thank you. So to properly illustrate the absolute magnitude of this recurring feat of stupidity that has most definitely been the biggest beard mistake I have ever made, I'm going to give you a metaphor, a hypothetical assembly, whatever you want to call it. You all know this guy, his name, Prickly Pete. Oh yes, Prickly Pete, a good man, a fine man, gives to his people. When kid asks him, Prickly Pete, do I do drug? He goes, no, no, ch child, you know do drug. And what does Pick Prickly Pete do? Well, he goes on home and he snorts a big old bag of hickory sticks. Oh, poor Prickly Pete. He was like a father to me. Essentially what I'm saying is, I've been essentially doing this, but in instead of drug awareness in good spirit to good old boyo, and then going home and doing the hickory stick and the jazz cabbage, um, well, my downfall is I've been giving beard advice and telling people to adhere to that beard advice and saying, hey, this beard advice is inherently good. And then going home and not even listening to myself and getting caught in a big old stew of not practicing what I preach. Let me explain. So about two months ago, I made a video called The Secret to Growing a Long Beard. And in that video, I say this. Uh, something I've realized is if you do the same thing, as your beard grows out and you don't adapt to the new length and to the new chaos that manifests itself, then you will fail. And even a month before that, I say this. And I wouldn't do this for too long because uh, the more you do this, you know, the kind of thinner your beard looks. So what does Big Brain Kaz do? Well, continue to blow dry your beard upwards and wonder what the hell did you do? What did I do wrong? So for the past two dickety months or so, <laughs> my beard has looked awful. Simply, simply awful. And the answer, the solution, has been running right through my lips multiple times throughout this entire year journey. Yet I fail to listen to myself. The tip that I am going to, you know, reiterate to you and also add something on top of it. The tip that I showed that I shared in that video had the secret to growing a long beard, and that is to notice when a styling strategy no longer works for your hair texture, for your beard length, or anything like that. And then take the actions appropriate to get yourself out of that phase, find a new styling maneuver that doesn't make your beard look bad, and try every single maneuver that you can find, and then very, very likely it's the case that that should be phased out of your beard routine entirely for the foreseeable future and not uh, to be reincorporated at a later time. It's very, very likely it has to stay out entirely. But uh, Mr. Big Brain Kaz over here, <laughs> 
broke his own rule and uh, basically pl plunged himself into what I've been calling hell uh, for the past two months or so. And it's, you know, it's been a shot to the ego. It hasn't been fun. I'll tell you what. By reincorporating the upwards blow dryer method all over the beard at a stage of growth that is very likely approaching terminal length. The translucency in the beard is very, very easy to bring out if the hairs are pulled out too far, especially the gobbler and neck hairs. Uh, this strategy, this upwards blow dryer method is fantastic when your beard is shorter, especially when your gobbler and neck growth can actually support your chin growth. But in this case, it just pulled out my beard, um, it, it, you know, all the way out here, too, way too far. It really creates this weird thinness, this weird wiriness that just isn't appealing whatsoever, especially in the cheeks. Uh, it totally removes any of the pop off the cheeks. Like I'm got, I have some nice. You know, my uh, my cheeks are popping out quite nicely right now, and that's something I never had with that upwards blow dryer method. It worked when my, you know, my uh, cheek hairs were shorter. Right now, look how long they are. Like, seriously, that, that's the very top of my cheek line, and this is how long these hairs are. It's absolutely ridiculous. Right? And if those hairs lay completely flat and, then, and they don't have some sort of pop, then it's going to make the cheeks look incredibly, incredibly sparse. Whereas right now, you know, they look pretty damn good. And they also add to the overall size of the beard. And, you know, and the gobbler area isn't pulled out too long and then therefore doesn't accentuate the thinness. It has a bit of a natural wave and that uh, closes off the transparency here. And I know exactly why I for some reason decided to reincorporate this, uh, you know, up blow dryer method. Well, I had some nagging areas in the corners, you know, these C curls around the cheeks and things of that nature. So I'm like, hey, the ideal situation would be to eliminate them. So then therefore, uh, you know, it, it looked a little more uniform in the corners. And so when, when that happens, what, basically what I had to do is I had to do the up maneuver. That's the best way to do it. Um, and if your beard hairs are at a point and they have a proper taper, so then it, when that all gets ironed out and you put it back down, it, you know, the uh, all the excess hairs here don't extend past, you know, the uh, strong point of the beard, then you're fine. Fine, but if that's not the case, if you're doing a year where, you know, all these hairs, you know, have a mind of their own, then that's going to be accentuated to a very, very high degree. And then if you do it here, you know, you have to also do it here and you always have to do it here. So the whole beard gets this whole up blow dryer. Um, you know, treatment, but it's very much the case that it just removed the three dimensionality of my cheeks. I'm going to post this new styling regimen very, very soon as it kind of uh, works more with the natural kind of uh, geometry of my beard and the tendencies of where my hairs want to go. And rather than fighting that, harnessing that, allowing these curls to kind of manifest and, you know, just uh, rocking a more natural beard as you guys have been telling me to. Uh, but it just very, very apparent to me. It if you're doing the up maneuver, which is by far probably one of the most abrasive methods that you can use, awesome in some lengths, but if, you know, very abrasive at longer lengths with no support, then you're not really rocking a natural beard. <laughs> Sorry to put it that way. Uh, I was not rocking a natural beard. That's what in my mind, that's what that was, but it just wasn't. So the moral of the story is, don't tell little Smippy, hey boy, do no drugs, okay? And then you go, you proceed to go home and do many drug. Because you're gonna feel shame after you do many drug, thinking of uh, a little Smippy. And what would little Smippy think? In other words, if you identify that something just ain't working for you, then hey, put the steps in place to potentially uh, make that relationship a healthier relationship to allow some distance between you and that thing, or eliminate it entirely if it's so toxic that it's skewing who you truly are, how you present yourself, and how you conduct yourself in the world. That's the, you know, kind of uh, philosophical point to make here. In other words, if your beard is suffering from a thing that you just keep doing over and over and over and you, you know, you're having a hard time noticing uh, and it just seems like overnight, boom, it just descends into hell uh, out of nowhere and you don't know what the heck has gone on. Just stop. <laughs> Breathe.
breathe, assess, try to remember the words that came out of your mouth uh, just a couple of months ago, just a couple of days ago, or whatever, and practice what you preach. Oh God, this is a weird video. <laughs> I'm gonna look back on this one and not like it very much. Maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll look at a lot. Cheers, I love you guys.